if you are watching this, you're probably about to take your AP Pre-Calculus Unit 2 Progress Check B test, and you need to brush up a little bit on those logs and on those semi-logs and all of those exponential things. So uh, we're just going to get right into practice problems. Usually when I make these videos, I have reteaching videos that go over how to do or maybe the directions into like the formula changes and stuff like that. But with these, we just kind of dive right into it and do the problems. Find when f of x equals two. Let's do all of these by simplifying things first, then I'll do what that tells me to do. What I see first is I see two log x minus log four. Uh, whenever you see a number in front of a log, make that an exponent. So this is the same as log x squared minus log of 4. Now, when you're subtracting two logs of the same base, you are going to divide the insides. So this becomes log base invisible 10 of x squared over 4. Now what it wants me to do is now that I have that, I can find out uh, what happens when f of x equals 2. So 2 equals log base invisible 10 of x squared over 4. Okay, so I'll put that invisible 10 there. What I'm going to do is in order to get rid of that log, I'm going to take the 10 to the of both sides. So this is 10 squared, 10 to the log base 10 of stuff, 10 to the log base 10 of stuff gets rid of that stuff. And so now what I have is I have 10 squared, which is 100, equals x squared over 4. Multiply both sides by 4. 400 equals x squared square root both sides. Now, normally when I square root both sides to solve, I attach a positive or negative. Uh, the square root of 400 is 20, so x is gonna equal positive or negative 20, but I have to be very, very, very careful here. I have to go to my original problem, and my original problem has me saying the log of x. I can't take the log of a negative number. It doesn't exist. So in this case, x is going to only equal the positive 20 because, again, you can take the log of a negative number. Just can't do it. Just can't do it. Um, all right. So with B, is there anything special I can do here? No. So I'm just going to start right off the bat by setting f of x equal to 2. So 2 is going to equal log base x squared of 81. It's kind of weird. In order to get rid of that x squared, what I can do is I can take the x squared to the of both sides, which will look like this, right? Which will look like that. That cancels out. And x squared squared means x squared times x squared, which is x to the fourth. That's going to equal 81. Now take the fourth root of both sides. And x is going to equal uh, 3. Now again, you know, if you're thinking, well, what about negative 3? Because negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is also 81. Uh, I can make it negative 3 because if x is squared... Uh, that turns that negative 3 into positive. Yeah, so I can do positive or negative 3 for this one. Oh, a unique situation in this case. Usually you wouldn't want to because you're not allowed to have a negative base. But if I end up squaring it, that base becomes positive anyway. So it's allowed. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, let's combine these guys. Uh, very similar to A, just, you know, with a few more steps make u an exponent, so u become log base 4 of 2 squared, which is 4, plus log base 4 of 2x minus log base 4 of 5, 
when you add logs of the same base, multiply the inside. So this becomes log base four of four times two, which is eight, so eight X minus log base four of five. When you subtract terms, logs of the same base, divide the inside. So this becomes log base four of eight X over five. Now I'm going to move that up here where I have a little bit more space. Uh, two is going to equal that. So two equals log base four of eight X over five. In order to get rid of that log base four, take the four to the of both sides. So four squared, four to the log base four cancels that out. Four squared is 16. 16 equals eight X over five. Multiply both sides by five. What was that 80? Equals eight X. Divide both sides by eight. And X equals 10. Always check, make sure you're allowed to plug in 10. Yep, that's the only issue that would be an issue, and I'm allowed to plug in 10. So X is 10. This was in a calculator section. Let me move my face just to double check. There was no calculator part there. Don't need one. Don't need it. <clears throat> is this a calculator problem? No. No calculators at all. Solve for X. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2. 2 to the X equals 1 over 16. I can rewrite 1 over 16 as 1 over 2 to the 4th. I can rewrite 1 over 2 to the 4th as 2 to the negative 4. And when you have a power equaling a power where the bases are the same, then the exponents are the same. So x equals negative 4. Hmm. Not too bad. And then you need to convert. Unlike this one. Uh, I have a 2 in front of an ln. Now remember the ln rules and the log rules follow the same exact rules. It's just ln is log base e, so it follows the same rules. Take that 2 and attach it to x. So now you have uh, log x squared, or ln x squared, plus ln of 1, which equals uh, 8. When you're adding logs, or in this case, LNs, uh, you multiply the inside. So this is going to be a tricky one. Uh, X squared times 1 is X squared. So I have LN of X squared equals 8. In order to get rid of an LN, remember, LN is the same thing as log base E. In order to get rid of an LN, you can take the E to the of both sides. And the E and the LN cancel each other out, bringing down the X squared that equals e to the eight. Now in order to get squared gone, you square root both sides. Normally when you square root both sides, you attach a positive or a negative. So that would give us positive or negative e to the fourth. However, I can't plug in negative e to the fourth because if I plug in negative e to the fourth, ln is not allowed to be negative, just like log is not allowed to be let negative. So I'm not allowed to include the negative. So x can only be the positive version of e to the fourth. Always do that. Always plug things back in. Holy cow. All right, so this becomes e to the 2x e squared squared means I multiply uh, exponents. Okay. When you multiply terms of the same base, add the exponents. So this becomes e to the 2x plus 4 uh, equals 1. There's two ways you can approach this. Two ways you can approach this, but I'm going to be smart about this. One way is you could take the ln of both sides. However, 
And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. We kind of learned from up here that ln of one did absolutely nothing. Why? Because ln or log of any base of one is zero. So if I ln both sides, I'll have ln of one, which gives me zero. I can also view this as, you know what? E to the zeroth is one. So E to the two X plus four equals E to the zeroth. It's all good. And we know from up here that if I have e to the 2x plus 4 equals 0, I can just set that up. 2x plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4. Divide by 2. And negative 4 over 2 is negative 2. Now, usually when we get negative 2 as an answer, I get a little nervous, but I don't have to worry about LNs here. I don't have to worry about logs here. I'm allowed to plug in negative 2. And when I plug in negative 2, things would simplify out nicely. So X can equal negative 2. It's legit. Pure legitness, as that kid once said. Remember him? I wonder how he's doing. Hmm. Still no calculator allowed. Solve for x. All right, uh, let's do whatever combinations I can. I can bring that 2 up there so you become log uh, base 1.6x squared equals, let me see, I'm subtracting them. And when you subtract logs of the same base, you divide the inside. So this becomes log uh, 1.6, base 1.6 of 4. In order to get rid of both logs, I can take the 1.6 to the of both sides, 1.6 to the of both sides. That cancels out and that cancels out and you have x squared equals four. Take the square root of both sides, attach the plus or negative, x is going to equal positive or negative two. However, you can't plug in negative two because you can't take the log of a zero or a negative. So x is only allowed to be two here. Okay. Okay. All right. So this next one, I'm going to approach a little differently than usual. I, I think a lot of people see parentheses squared. You want to multiply that, but don't. Trust me. Let's let 2 to the x equal a. And this way, what I can do is I can rewrite this guy as negative 8 equals a squared minus 9a. And you would look at that and be like, Let's add 8 to both sides, and it looks like one of those factory problems. It is a factory problem, because you do it in a factory, because you factor. Uh, a squared minus 9a plus 8. Two numbers that multiply out to 8 and add up to negative 9 would be negative 1 and negative 8. So 0 equals uh, a minus 1 and a minus eight. That gives us two possible options. A could be one, A could be eight. Now, remember, I let two to the X equal A, which means two to the X equals one, okay? Well, how can I write out one? Because I know if I do 2 to the x equals 8, I can do 2 to the x equals 2 to the third, and x can equal 3. But how can I do that with the other guy? Oh, I know what I can do. 2 to the x is going to equal to 2 to the zeroth power. So if I do 0, I have x equals 0. Now, we know that I'm not allowed to do logs of zero. I'm not allowed to do LNs of zero, but I don't see any logs and I don't see any LNs over here. And if I were to plug in two to the zero, I would get one squared. And if I were to plug in two to the zero, I would get one. And one minus nine is negative eight. So it works out just fine. Look at that. Isn't that great? And that's something else. It sure is. It sure is something else. Oh, no calculator yet again. All right.
show that this guy is exponential. Well, you know a chart or a graph is exponential by seeing if you were to multiply the same number to this guy every single time, and that's exactly what we do here. If you multiply by two every time, it's exponential. Cha-ching! So to write an equation in the form y equals a times b to the x without the use of a calculator, I have to realize two things. A is my initial value, and an initial value is when x equals zero. B is going to be my common ratio, my multiplier. When I look over here, when x is zero, my y is two. So A is going to be two in this case. My B is also going to be 2, so this is going to be 2 to the x power, so that's my equation. And if you're a little nervous, you can always try it out. If I plug in 1, I get 2 times 2, which is 4, and if I plug in 3, I get 2 to the 3rd, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. Looks like I did it right. Now I need to rewrite this equation in the form y equals c to the x. What does that mean? That means get rid of this second 2 here. Well, I'm multiplying 2 times 2 to the x. And when you multiply two numbers of the same base, you add the exponents. So this is the same as invisible 1, 2 to the x plus 1. So I can rewrite this as y equals 2 to the x plus 1. Same exact formula, same exact equation, just written differently. Find y when x is negative 4. All right, let's use that uh, green formula that I just created. So when x is 4, this becomes y equals 2 to the negative 4 plus 1, which is the same as 2 to the negative 3 which can be written as 1 over 2 to the third, which can be written as 1 over 8. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to take this guy right here one more time. I'm going to take this equation right here, and I'm going to find out what the inverse is. Okay, so this is how you find the inverse. And again, I'm going to use the green equation because it's going to be easier to deal with than the red equation. Step number one in defining your inverse is you swap your x and your y values. Okay, so I have uh, 2, or x equals 2 to the y plus 1. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to get y all by itself. Well, in order to get y all by itself, step number one is I need to rewrite this in its logarithmic form. So this becomes log base 2 of x equals uh, y plus 1. I don't know why it took me that long. y plus 1. One more step, subtract 1 from both sides. And so I have log base 2 of x. I'll put that in parentheses so I know that that minus 1 is not a part of it equals y. And rewriting that in its final format, y inverse is going to equal log base 2 of x minus 1. All right. Great. Still, 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 still. No calculator. Find the logarithmic equation by first finding the exponential equation. All right, well... Uh, ugh. okay, this is going to be fun. Um, so basically, the exponential and logarithmic are inverses. Okay, so I need to find the logarithmic equation based off of that. I really can't find the log, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the exponential version and then find its inverse. What's really, really, really important when you do the exponential version is you swap everything. Negative one, two ninths, zero, two thirds, one, two, two, six, 
318. Now, what we're doing here, very similar to the last problem, is we're multiplying everything by 3. Okay, remember y equals a times b to the x. That, that b is your multiplier. That a is your initial value when x is 0. When x is 0, I have 2 thirds. So y equals 2 thirds. b is my multiplier, which is going to be 3 to the x. Now what I need to do is I need to find the inverse. So in order to find the inverse, you swap your x and your y. So x is going to equal 2 thirds uh, 3 to the y. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 over 2. Like that, like that, like that. Okay, so now I have 3x over 2 equals 3 to the y. Taking the log base 3 of both sides, taking the log base 3 of both sides looks like this. And why I'm going to do that is so these guys cancel out and just the y drops down. So now I have the log base 3 of 1.5x or 3x over 2 or however you want to view it equals y. Me flipping that and making that its uh, proper form is going to be y equals log base 3 of 3x over 2. Wow. That is not pleasant at all. Now the problem is, you know, I'm not allowed to have negatives, so I'm not sure why this worked out the way it did, but, you know, it worked out the way it did. Sketch both to show that they are inverses. Well, I have points. I have points, so let's sketch them. Let's sketch them. Um, I'll make green green. So I have, uh, let me see, let me add a few more. Um, it seems like going out to oh, some of these really big numbers. Um, let me make sure I go out to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That's okay. One, two, three, four, five. That's okay. Let's just add one more. Negative one. All right. So let me do the green. Negative one. Two ninths is going to be really small. Zero, two thirds is going to be much bigger. One, two is going to be bigger. 2, 6 is going to be way up here. So basically, we're expecting that to happen. Okay. And then the other one is going to be uh, 2 ninths, negative 1. So like here, uh, 2 thirds, 0 is like here. 2, 1 is like here, and 6, 2 is here. And so basically we're expecting something like this to happen. Now what an inverse looks like is if you were to draw uh, the equation y equals x, it's that perfect diagonal right there, does it look like if I tilt my head to the side that green and black are mirror images of each other? They do. They kind of look like this butterfly thing where if I were to take that red line and go like that, you can see the butterfly wings. So looks good to me. Still no calculator. Find the domain and range of f of x. Okay, I can do that. Uh, I'm allowed to plug in whatever x value I want. Uh, and since this is a exponential function, I know exponential functions look like this. Okay. Exponential functions look like this. Since I'm not adding a number, it kind of flattens out here and then explodes like that. So my domain is going to be whatever I want, negative infinity to infinity. Okay. 
my range is going to be I'm not allowed, I'm never going to hit the, uh, the x axis, which means never zero all the way up to positive infinity. That's how exponential functions work when they look like it's regular old base form anyway. Find the inverse of f of x. All right. Uh, I like to call f of x y when I do inverses because otherwise it throws my ADHD brain off. Step number one is to swap the x and the y. So x now equals 5 to the y. Uh, in order to get this in y all by itself form, I can take the log base 5 of both sides. So log base 5 of x equals log base 5 of 5 to the y. These guys cancel out. You end up with log base 5 of x equals y. So writing out the inverse, f inverse of x is going to be log base 5 of x. Find the domain and range of the inverse of f of x. Well, without doing anything, Without doing anything, uh, I know that the domain and range of an inverse are just switched. So the domain of f of x, I'm sure I mean uh, of the inverse of f of x, okay. The domain and range of the inverse of f of x is just me saying, all right, well, the domain is now the range, so negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is now the domain zero to infinity. Find f inverse of 125. All right, f inverse of 125 is the same as log base 5 of 125. So I don't know what f inverse is, so I'll just say a equals log base 5 of 125. Writing that out in its exponential form looks like uh, 5 to the a equals 125. Wait a minute. 5 times 5 times 5 is also 125. 5 to the third power. a equals 3. Which means f inverse of negative 125, positive 125, is 3. All right, sketch g of x. g of x is log base 5 of x minus 5. All right, logs look like this, okay? And log base whatever of 1 is 0. So anytime you're graphing, you're always going to go through the point 1, 0. In this case, however, I'm taking the whole thing and I'm subtracting 5, which is a translation down five units or negative five units, a vertical translation of negative five units. So sketching this guy, okay, would normally look like this, right? But now I'm moving it down five units and I'm going to have it go through the point five. zero or no one negative five why would i say five zero one negative five because you're moving it down five silly me uh so the end behavior as limits basically what's going to happen is i'm not allowed to plug in negative numbers i'm not i'm not allowed to plug in zero so what this is going to look like is my domain. My domain is going to be zero, but not including it and going on to uh, infinity. My range is I'm allowed to get whatever number I want. Okay. So my end behavior has me saying, all right, well, normally I would say as X approaches negative infinity, but I'm not allowed to say negative infinity because it doesn't go beyond zero. So I have to say my limit as x approaches 0 from the right side. 
and my limit as x approaches zero from the right side is going to be negative infinity because this guy is going to keep going downward forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'm allowed to go all the way to the right if I want. I'm allowed to plug in whatever x value I want. So my limit as x approaches positive infinity is going to be positive infinity. This guy will keep moving up and to the right slowly, but it'll keep moving up and to the right. Find when g of x crosses the x-axis. Well, that's fancy talk for find when g of x is equal to zero. So zero is going to equal log base five of x minus five. So let's add five to both sides. Five equals log base five of x. In order to get rid of log, let's make five, like let's take five to the of both sides. So that goes away. And x is going to equal 5 to the fifth, which is, I have no idea. Pretty big number, though. And again, you can kind of see that because see how slowly that goes up? It's going to take a really long time to hit the x-axis. So I know 5 to the fourth is 625. So multiply 5 to that, 3,000 something, you'll eventually hit the x-axis. <laughs> Great. Great. Can I use a calculator now? Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. So it's calculator time. I've heard of clobbering time, but now it's calculator time. All right. So in order to come up with an equation for this, we need to go to stat and go to edit. I already put the numbers in, uh, so I don't think I made a mistake. But once your numbers are in, you're going to go to stat calc. Now, chances are we're going to need this equation for later. We're doing exponential regression, which is zero. So you can either hit zero or you can go down to zero and do exponential regression. Storing this is going to allow me to use it later. So I'm going to go to vars, y vars, and then hit enter, enter on the function. Then I'm going to calculate it and get my equation, which should be written out as y equals 9.635 times 1.034 to the x. So after using exp reg, we end up with y equals 9.635 times 1.034 to the x. Now B is saying, when will this get 18 whatever inches tall? Let's let our calculator do the work. Now, in order to find out when this will become 18 inches tall, uh, if I hit zoom uh, standard or have my regular graph, I don't really see much. So why don't we zoom out, right? Because what I want to do is I want to see when this is going to hit 18. I'm going to go to Y equals and graph 18. And then find out where these two lines intersect. Now, they do intersect here, which is good news. Otherwise, I'd have to zoom out some more. But in order to find out where these two lines intersect, I'm going to hit second calc, hit five for intersect, uh, first curve, I'm already there, second curve, I'm already there, enter, 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 and the intersection is 18.86, uh, 18.869, so we'll write that out as 18.869 days. So the 18th day is when this should do it. So Mr. Calculator says 18.869, and what are we talking about? Days. Days. Okay. All right. Now, this is exponential, which follows log rules, which means I should be able to use a semi-log plot to graph these out and get what appears to be a straight line. So let's do that. Zero and 7.6, maybe somewhere around there. One, oh, okay, that was one. So I guess I don't do zero. One and 9.5 is gonna live right there. Uh, two and 11.2, so this is 10. So 11.2 will be somewhere around there. Uh, 11.9, somewhere around there. 
uh, 12.8. So this is 12, 12.8, somewhere around there. Uh, let me see, 13.5, so around here, 14.1, 14.9, and 15.5. So other than just for whatever reason, this first dot, this 9.5, I wonder if maybe this isn't exactly logarithmic or exponential. But as you can see, uh, after this day one, that's a straight line. It becomes a straight line when graphed. So exponential and semi-log plots, you know, remember a semi-log plot, the purpose of a semi-log plot is to make logarithmic or exponential functions appear linear. And that's what this does for the most part. Just except for that first one was weird and probably because I stole this problem from the internet. All right. <clears throat> f of x equals 2e minus log base for 1.4x, g of x equals 2 times 1.78 to the x, find the end behavior of f of x. All right, so that's f of x. I need to throw that into my calculator. Problem. I don't have log base 4 in my calculator. I have log and I have ln, so we need to use the change of base formula. So when I throw this into my calculator, I'm going to make sure that I have log, of 1.4x on the top in the numerator and log of base 4 in the denominator. This is log base 10. I could use ln if I wanted to, but let's throw that into my calculator and see what my end behavior ends up being. All right, so let's graph this train wreck of a problem. We have 2e as you saw from what I wrote down, I had to rewrite this guy in log form, so minus uh, let's do parentheses, log uh, 1.4x, 1.4x, close parentheses, divided by log of, what was it, 4, it's just a number, graph. All right, basically what we see is we see a log flipped upside down because it's negative, the log became negative, and it starts kind of up here, it's shifted up a bit. Now, logs range, regular logs range is any number I want. This isn't gonna change just because I add a number and make log negative. So my range is gonna be the same. What's gonna happen is this is gonna keep going down forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So my range is infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. My domain is the same as it always is. I'm just not allowed to plug in any zeros or any negatives. So that's going to be my end behavior when I write that out, just keeping that into effect. All right, so the limit as x approached zero from the right side of f of x appeared to be going to positive infinity. Okay, again, this picture looked like that. Okay, and I'm not going to go to the limit as x approaches negative infinity because I'll never make it. Okay, so that's what it appeared to look like. And the limit as x approached positive infinity, which I am allowed to do, seems to be just going slowly downward forever. So f of x is going to equal negative infinity, slowly going downward forever, <laughs> like my life. <laughs> uh. Solve when g of x equals 4. There's g of x. Let's use our calculator. All right, so now I have to deal with g of x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that guy there because I really don't want to feel like retyping it because I know part c I need it again. I'm going to go up to the equal sign and get rid of it. Now, g of x was a mess in its own right. 2 times 1.78 to the x. So 2 times 1.78 and then to the x power. Go like this. Okay? Now I care about when that equals 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to use 4, and then I'm going to graph that. Boom. So it looks like it happens right around here. So I'm going to hit second calc and find the intersect. So five takes me to the intersect. I should be able to hit enter, 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 and be in good shape. And the intersection is negative 1.2021. So because this is pre-calc and it's only three decimals, negative 1.202 will do the job.
So I ended up with negative 1.202. Find when g of x is greater than f of x. Well, now I have both. So let's let our calculator show us how it's done. Now, part three is I have to find out when g of x is greater than f of x. So g of x was this red one. I don't need u anymore, so let's clear u and let's bring this back by hitting enter on the equal sign. So g of x needs, so red needs to be greater than blue graph. Okay, so red appears to be greater than blue at this moment right here and forever on to infinity. So I need to find the intersection point of those two curves right there. So again, second trace, intersect. Now notice nothing's blinking on the first curve because x equals zero doesn't exist. I have to move to the right just a little bit so it shows up, enter, 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 and it intersects at 1.54669. So I'll do 1.547. Uh, and this happens when x is greater than 1.547. So I'll write that out in interval notation when I get back to it. So it happens when uh, they intersect at 1.547. So we'll say 1.547. To infinity and beyond. Toy Story. All right. Half Life. The decay of a certain radioactive element X can be modeled by the equation uh, n of t equals n sub zero times e to the stuff, where n of t represents uh, the amount of element X remaining after 10 t years. Sorry, n sub zero is the initial amount, makes sense, of element X. T is time in years. If the initial amount is 500, find the amount of element X remaining after 10 years. Okay, so that's not that bad. All I have to do for this one is N of T equals the initial amount, which it tells us to be 500, times E to the negative 0 0.045 times T, which is time in years, so times 10. And I just throw that in my calculator and see what happens. All right, so this is just a gross calculator exercise. 500 e to the can be found by hitting second ln, and then I'm going to type in negative 0 0.045, so 0 0.045 uh, times 10, and end up with that, 318.814, so let's write that out. So I end up with 318.814 grams after 10 years. Express the decay equation, the one that I have up here, in logarithmic form. Okay, I guess I'm just going to leave the original. I'm not going to do all this fancy stuff that I added to it. So if I want to write this out in logarithmic form, I notice that that's an E and that's the first thing that I want to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ln of both sides as sloppy as that looks. So that gives me the ln of n of t equals the ln of n sub 0 times e to the negative 0.045t. Now when I multiply stuff inside ln, Okay, I am allowed to add, so ln of n of t is going to equal ln of n sub o plus ln of e to the negative 0 0.045t. Now, I know that ln of e to the stuff just leaves me with this stuff, so that is going to drop down. While I'm at it, let's subtract ln of n sub o from both sides, n sub zero. So that gives me ln of n of t minus ln of n sub zero equals that. I'm subtracting these lns, which means I'm allowed to divide the insides. So this ends up being ln of n of t divided by n sub zero equals negative 0.045t. No calculator for that one. 
just gross, just, just a gross problem. Well, I guess that's all I really need to do. I mean, it's in logarithmic form, isn't it? Isn't it, governor? It's my British impression. Consider another radioactive element, why? Uh, with an initial amount of 800 grams decaying according to that equation, brand new equation where M of T represents the amount of element Y remaining after T years. N sub zero is the initial amount of element Y and T is time in years. Determine the time, the time it takes for element Y to decay uh, to 100 grams. All right, so my final amount is going to be 100. So M of T is 100. My initial amount is 800 uh, times 2 to the negative 0 0.02 T power. So why did I go uh, like that? Well, divide both sides by 800. And you get 1 over 8 equals 2 to the gross stuff. Now you're like... That's still really gross. It sure is. But you know what? 1 over 8 is 1 over 2 to the 3rd, isn't it? And 1 over 2 to the 3rd is the same as 2 to the negative 3rd. So now they have the same base. So really all I have to do is... I'm still going to use my calculator because I don't want to screw it up. These guys equal each other. So all I have to do is divide negative three divided by negative 0.02, and I'll get my T. So let's see what happens. All right, so for part C, after doing all that math, really all we had to do is do negative three divided by negative 0 0.02, and we end up with 150. It's not too bad. 150. 150 years. All right. Okay. Compare and contrast the equations from the first slide and the second slide. Explain how their structure is different and how their constants affect the decay and process differently. Well, 2, or E, is slightly bigger than 2. So you're going to see a faster change. E is 2.718. So you're going to see this change in a faster way. So that's element X is going to decay at a much faster rate than element Y. Um, that's basically it. I, I got this problem from ChatGPT. And you failed me, ChatGPT. As you will in the future. Oh, I hope ChatGPT isn't listening. Well, thank you guys for watching. This was so much fun. Love you all. Like and subscribe. Mm, except for you, Chap GPT. Mm, bye.